Sehila Mahabes Leas Kavahali Hanai Eas Nivakabos Sekalia Ravana Sizai Kamano Sefalaya Ino Sama Heli Gazua Fevele Sezania Haka Sefale Yeriana Mahas Kahaya E Sesale Suba Abro Sosolima Haya let the waters of life flow from the chambers of our spirit. Abra savana brahada vele gazash. Yezezele barina savaya. Ah savraha sevele manus. We give you praise. We give you glory. We are in a strategic time in the calendar of God. The earth and humankind is a product of the wisdom that emanated from the bowels of the divine. Before time began, when the immortals dwelt amongst themselves, God, being a being of love, decided to fabricate a dimension that could interact with his reality. The Father and the Logos and the spirit commune with one another before time began a point came love wants to share so the divine decided to embark on the journey of creation and that was when it became necessary for this visible realm to be designed and having created this realm it was impossible for the creation to interact with god because god is fire and is unapproachable it was impossible you could not come before him because he is a consuming fire. So he took divinity another time, aeons that cannot be captured in time, to think how can creation relate with me? Because it happens to be that if you look into the scriptures, you will realize that even the angelic realm, they could not have fellowship with God. The 24 elders that are the closest in proximity to the throne, every time Yahweh shows up, they fall on their faces. You can't behold him. The glory and the radiance from his bowels, it consumes. Every time he shows up from the east gate, Lucifer cried, Yahweh cometh, Yahweh and the whole heavens go down flat but this being when he began the project of creation his goal was intimacy because he's a being of love how can creation ever interact with me that was when by wisdom he he went into himself and came out with a technology of intimacy and that technology is what resulted in the creation of man so glory was encapsulated in man body every time creation interacted with that man it was a gateway into the divine the only way you could access god the only way god could be seen and touched was by the instrumentality of that being called man this was a position that lucifer desired he said i will exalt my throne and be like the most high but it was not given to the angelic realm 
and when he saw that that privilege was given to man the only thing he could do was to bring deception because he knows that what causes a creation to fall off the height of glory is the spirit of rebellion and when man rebelled against the divine that intimacy protocol was broken and the earth began to spiral into destruction because the safety of the earth was not a function of the direct interaction of God. Man was in this world to preserve the realm. That's why when Adam was in Eden, there was no earthquake. When Adam was in Eden, there was no landslide. His alignment with God preserved the visible universe. The moment he fell, creation began to spiral into oblivion. Creation cannot stand unless it is possible for God to interact with creation. And man happened to be the only gate. The Bible said in Genesis chapter 3 verse 8 that in the cool of the day, the voice of God came walking in the garden. The word in the cool of the day is not time. The word is ruach. Ruach yom. It means the time of the spirit. The moment of encounter. The time of intimacy. That was what held the visible realm together. The moment of the spirit when Ruach HaKodesh walks into the garden but intimacy had been broken the earth had one sentence judgment and destruction even the man could no longer interact with the divine until the protocol of salvation was consummated and man was restored back to God but the earth the sequence of destruction had been set in motion and until the end comes and the earth is judged it will be impossible for that dimension that God had in mind to come again it is when the earth is judged that the new Jerusalem will show up but it happens to be that we are in a moment we are in a strategic calendar when the activities of the last days is beginning to unfold and there are seven categories of activities that will happen the first is the great falling away because many will fall under the spirit of deception and they will depart from God that is what is called the mystery of iniquity because he said because iniquity shall abound the love of many will wax cold and in 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 6 he said the mystery of iniquity now walk it iniquity is not necessarily sin iniquity is a state of godlessness so that is what the great falling away is about the devil will bring deception by the instrumentality of lust and many will be cut off from god perpetually permit me to go into science a bit and explain what i'm talking about you see the design of man is such that his spirit soul and body so through the senses of the spirit the soul and the body he can traffic dimensions his spirit traffics the realm of god his body traffics this visible realm and then the soul is the gate through which the traffic takes place. Apostle have taught us that the spirit is made up of intuition, communion and conscience. The soul, because of the fall, is now recategorized into different dimensions of lust. The soul is made up of the will, the mind and the emotion. The body which had five senses have now been recategorized into the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. So man through intuition of his spirit can interact with, with the mind. So the reason you can pick frequencies from God is because your mind can interact with the gate of intuition. The reason you can sense the Holy Spirit is because your emotion can interact by the communion. The reason you can do the will of God is because your will can interact with the conscience. So that is the traffic channel between the soul and the spirit. The body is supposed to have a navigatory path where the energy of life that comes from that intimacy relates with the world and the earth is colonized. But now the body has been reconfigured. So what loss does is that it draws man away from God. So the lust of the eyes interacts with the mind and it pulls you away from God. The lust of the flesh interacts with your emotion. It pulls you away from God. The lust, the lust, the pride of life interacts with the will and it draws you from God. So, so long as the man lives by the new economy of the soul, which is lost, the man will be perpetually departed. So what the world is up to is to create different sets of intelligence that maximizes the powers of lust. And at the end of the day, man will depart from God, never to be able to return. The climax is what we call the mark of the beast. 
when you take it God can't redeem you because you have journeyed forever and there are different scientific infrastructures and intelligences currently going on to maximize the powers of lust and take man away from God eternally you hear of genetic intelligence what's the idea behind genetic engineering is to reconfigure the DNA helix to make the man a superhuman that no longer has need for God the gene is remodified and the man becomes a superhuman he has no need for God why would the man want that lost is at work currently there are researches going on by reason of quantum mechanics in in class in in, in, in quantum chemistry you you see that the, the the electron is in in the orbit because of the centripetal force and the centrifugal force that holds it in the place that's how the earth revolves around the planets they are believing now that if you can harness energy from other dimensions apart from the earth the earth can absorb energy enough and have a quantum leap so it will migrate from where god put it and if the earth migrates the ordinances of this world will collapse these are different types of deception that prospers because of lust a man wants to become a god unfortunately it happens to be that your body is an antenna you are an electromagnetic antenna do you know why you enter a room where the quarry and you know the energy has been altered so you can pick it it's electromagnetic radiation do you know why you come for a service when the anointing increases people begin to fall and you interact the energy has been altered so you can pick it you are you are an antenna the same way science currently is developing antennas to manipulate the soul structure so if those things are activated you will want to serve god but they can channel frequencies in your direction and you cannot control yourself because you will pick the vibration but man is on this beat because he wants to be independent from god that is what you call the mystery of iniquity dimensions of intelligence that we separate man perpetually from God. He can't return anymore. Your body, your brain releases electromagnetic impulses. Your heart increases electrical impulses. The cardiac muscles function by electrical impulses. The brain cells function by electromagnetic impulses. You can be chipped with a, a, a chip and that chip can hybridize with you and you become a machine. You can't choose God anymore is the mystery of iniquity so instead of arguing i see a lot of people arguing pre-tribulation and they don't even know scriptures because they want to escape and that escape that escape strategy is also sponsored by lust because they don't want to come under the government of the holy ghost they think because you have christ there will be a strategy that will take you away because they are they, their spirit man doesn't have enough energy to stand if you can't stand the lust of now if you are in the days of the tribulation you can't stand so the the doctrine is, is sponsored because man has chosen the path of lust the great falling away a function of of the mystery of iniquity and the second thing that happens is what we call the great awakening the great awakening is what results when the gospel of the kingdom is preached it's not just the gospel of salvation it's the gospel of the kingdom the gospel of the kingdom is the gospel that brings you under the government of the spirit you begin to live by the energy and the life that proceeds from the realm of god the gospel of the kingdom is a gospel that enslaves you to the will of the king so that you become an extension of his reality and the only way men can enter into the reality of that gospel is when lost is tamed lost must be tamed this is what the great awakening is all about so the first level of preparation which is one of the most significant reasons for priesthood is the ability to harness the world back to the christ is evangelism by power power not by mental capacity power because you enter into heaven and you can secure verdicts he said have dominion how can a man have dominion dominion is the verdict of intimacy because the man mingled with god god spoke and said have dominion that's why psalm 2 verse 8 he said ask of me i will give you the hidden 
for an inheritance the uttermost part of the earth for a possession you ask for the nations before you preach to them you can't preach to a nation that you have not asked for in prayer Isaiah chapter 2 verse 2 he said in the last days the house of God remember Jesus said my house shall be called the house of prayer the house of God shall be on the mountain of God he shall be exalted above all his and all mountains and he said men of all nations shall say let us go to the house of God that he may teach us his ways for out of Zion proceeds the law so they are returning back to the law of God the gospel of the kingdom is the unveiling of the laws of God back to a world ruled by iniquity and the only way that happens is when men ascend the mountains of God this is why you are not a preacher now unless you are first of all an intercessor a lot of people argue scriptures because they think it's an intellectual enterprise you have no voice people will be hearing your message and fornicating they will be hearing your message and drinking and say, wow, this man's a big preacher. <laughs> this man's a big preacher. Because there is no power. Hasefona, Cesalia Mahana, Skida. There is never a time where the world was redeemed from iniquity without prayer. The Bible said in Genesis chapter 4, verse 25, God gave another seed to Abraham in the place of Abel that Cain slew and his name was called Seth and he says Seth had a seed and he called him Enosh and he said then men began to call upon the name of the Lord redemption of a word of iniquity begins when men begins to call on the name of the Lord without intercession there is no gospel in the last day the gospel in the last day is not bible exegesis it is power it is power power that is born out of prayer you can't conquer the world if you don't contain contend for it in prayer he said in exodus chapter 2 verse 24 rise ye up take up thy journey and go beyond the river Anon. Behold, I have given unto you Sihon the Amorite, king of Heshbon. Begin to contend with him in battle and subdue him. You contend in prayer. You fight for the nations. You fight for the souls until you win them in prayer. When you speak, even if you say God loves you, they will bow. The greatest of men were men of prayer. He said in Genesis chapter 8 verse 7 and Noah found favor with God. You will think Noah sat down and found favor. It is in Genesis chapter 8 verse 20 that you will realize the reason Noah found favor and became the salvation of the world was because he was a man of the altars. He raised altars. So it was by his incense that he caught favor with the immortal spirit. How do you please this unending oracle? How? It is by lying and prostrating before him day and night. The sacrifices of God are of a contrite heart and of a broken spirit. Men that go down in prayer, they have checked and discovered the flesh profited nothing. I have no power. I can speak good English, but nobody is saved by good English. What enters their spirit is a convicting power that shatters the mystery of iniquity. The guy is not sinning because he loves it. There is a force that binds him in sin. He said, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Whom the God of this world have blinded their heart. How do I take that veil away? It's by contending in prayer. It's by contending. That's why Jesus, the word of God. The Bible said in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. The same was with God in the beginning. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. The life was the light of man. But that light could not save the world. He was the word. He was God. He was creator. He was light. But the land of Zebulun was still in darkness. So before he began to preach, he went for 40 days and 40 nights. And when he came down from the mountain, even before he uttered his voice, in Matthew chapter 4 verse 16, he said, the land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people that sat in darkness, the 
they sat in the shackles of death so they were not sinners they were captives of death and the only way you could pull them out of the shackles of death is when you have a verdict from the throne and only men of prayer travel that far so you reign you reign Shanzai young king Kadosh Kadosh you are mighty on your throne ha. you reign you reign you reign you reign Kadosh you, you are mighty, mighty on your throne the salvation enterprise of the last day is an enterprise of prayer there is so much we cannot achieve unless we pray and when we pray even the host of heaven become partners with us the bible said in revelation 5 verse 8 it said the prayers of the saints they ascend to all heaven as others and they are stored in golden fires so on the strength of that prayer God has legality to hit the earth realm. That's why Jesus appeared in heaven. He said, Paul, Paul, so, so, why persecutest thou me? Jesus can preach from heaven because there's a bank of prayer. Somebody has created an opening. An angel can hit the earth realm because there is a bank of prayer. When they prayed in Matthew chapter 12, prayer was made of the church. An angel showed up and carried Peter from the prison and liberated him. When angels partner in evangelism is because incense have come to heaven. The prayers of the saints. Priesthood is the sword of the earth. Any man who preserved this earth was a man of prayer. Go and study the scripture. You reign. You reign. You reign. Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, O fountains of the deep. Cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. The men of old were wise men. They knew what to do. They knew what to do. They knew the cries of iniquity in Sodom have risen to me and I am going to destroy it. Genesis chapter 8 verse 19 and a man of prayer rose up. Will the God of all heaven destroy the righteous and those in iniquity? Will the God, the just God, he knew intercession in the corridors of heaven this was a, a judgment that was perfected, concluded in the annals of eternity. But a man on earth by priesthood could change it. What if you find 50 righteous men? Say, if I find 50 righteous men, I will spare the city. What if you find 40 righteous men? What if you find 30? What if you find 20? He stopped at 10 because he thought Lord had learned something. But unfortunately, all Lord knew to do was to raise cattle. He didn't know that the prosperity of Abraham was born on altars. In Genesis chapter 12 verse 7, the moment he entered Bethel, he built an altar. In Genesis chapter 12 verse 18, the moment he shifted from Bethel, he built an altar. He littered everywhere with altars. That's why his prosperity is invincible. You can't fight him. And Lot could not raise ten righteous men. He was there, his soul was grieved, but he didn't know anything about priesthood. This is not a time to show that you know scriptures. It's beautiful. But make sure your altar is alive. Else you are a talker. You have no witness. I know a lot of people running everywhere writing things. <laughs> One of the nine voices in the courts of heaven is the voice of the church of the firstborn. And that voice is the voice of intercession. That is what gives us the right to participate in that realm. The first preparation is the preparation of power evangelism. Many must be brought back to the kingdom. And the only way we can do it is to shatter the forces of iniquity. 
the second preparation is to gain stamina for yourself in the spirit by joining through prayer into the holy of holies <laughs> what you know in your head will fly the moment there is crisis it is what you carry in your spirit that we speak when you see a man under pressure that's what you know the stuff is made of many can talk but what re-engineers your inner man is the light of the presence if you can't journey there in prayer you are at risk you will know a lot but you will float away like the chaff before the wind how do you stand in the counsel of god is when you travel there for yourself in romans chapter 8 verse 9 paul said you are not in the flesh he said you are in the spirit if you have the holy ghost in you you are in the spirit but in galatians 5 26 paul began to speak he said if you are in the spirit then walk in the spirit prayer is a migration into the presence prayer is a journey into intimacy with god prayer is a progression in the spirit from the standpoint of weakness to where you are enveloped by the energy of the divine in isaiah chapter 40 verse 28 he said have you not heard has it not been said to you that the everlasting god fainted not neither is he weary he giveth power to the faint unto them that have no might he increased strength but he now began to compare the everlasting god with man he said even the youth shall be weary and the young men shall utterly fall the reason is because the glory of the young man is his strength but he's telling you that the strength of man will fail that's why he said in that day no man shall stand he said woe unto them that are with child and them that give suck he said men's heart will fail them because of fear let them that are in jerusalem run to the mountain and tell it to cover them no man can survive the only way you can survive is when your energy your weakness is exchanged for that of god and the young man that shall faint suddenly is a day that wait upon the lord they mount up with wings like the eagles that mounting up is when your weakness is exchanged they mount up with wings like the eagle and suddenly say they will run they shall not be weary the young man was destined for weariness but he has waited and when he waits weariness is exchanged for strength the way we survive the strategy of eternal preservation is the strategy of priesthood if you can't wait you can't stand only men of prayer can stand on in the day of the lord it's like the old tabernacle the gate is the office of the christ it reveals the four dimensions of jesus christ blue white scarlet and purple the king the servant the son of god and the word of life by the finished works of christ you are brought in but the moment you enter the gate you begin the business of priesthood the first thing you do is that you latch onto the horn of the altar because you will notice that you are weak and if you hold on to that place this is why we pray and most time flesh begins to fight but men who don't understand when flesh fights they give way and they are never strong what it means to hold on to the horn of the altar is a a realization like paul said we are the circumcision that worship god in the spirit rejoicing in christ jesus having no confidence the man that holds to the altar he has judged the flesh and he has concluded that in himself he has no strength so he will stay there until help comes and when help comes you meet the lava because from the gate you have the altar of, of the the altar of, of of sacrifice from the altar of sacrifice you have the lava the lava is the ministry of the holy ghost then the holy ghost begins to carry you into reality that's when you enter the inner court many christians are in the outer court they are singing i am saved but they are living in secret sin our father in the lord told us that the triangle of life in the spirit is secret purity strict righteousness and generous kindness this dimension is not for everybody who is born again it's for men that have traveled to the secret place 
how far have you traveled is what will determine whether you will stand because from the great awakening you have the great tribulation from the great tribulation you have the rapture from the rapture you have the return for the battle of Amegidon and the millennial reign then the white throne judgment your coming to the secret place is to build stamina to survive the great tribulation many will not survive because all they know is in their head they can't travel deep in the spirit they can't travel we will hold on to that horn in prayer until that thing that wants to pull us away bows and the moment it happens you sense a ventilation that is you interacting with the holy ghost it's like the lava it washes you and then it brings you to the inner court when you come to the inner court you don't struggle anymore because at that time your, your inner man is fed you have the altar of shoe bread that's when you begin to eat of the word of life suddenly you came weak but that energy came comes on you the first time i experienced it i was tired and sleepy i wanted to pray and i knelt down and said lord help me lord help me i thought i would doze up and suddenly light came out of the wall and entered me and before i knew it i was there for over six hours i said what happened here i was fed of the bread of life i ate something i ate something that was outside my flesh You want to know strength you must travel into the inner place the secret place is the place of strength how much of the bread of life have you eaten elijah was weak and vulnerable and the angel stood up he said rise up and eat for the journey is great he ate and slept again rise up and eat the journey is great and when he ate on the strength of that bread he walked 40 days and 40 nights to horeb the men that can go through are the men that are fed they are the men fed of the word of life that's why jesus when the devil was coming to tempt him he went ahead of the devil 40 days and he fasted and prayed when the devil showed up he thought he was tempting him everyone he speaks there's a rema word that just flows out of him naturally he is being fed man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. When you are confused, it's because you have no bread. When you are weary, it's because you have no bread. Every time there is crisis, go back and lock the door. As you overpower the dictates of flesh, the Holy Ghost comes and ventilates you and you begin to feed of the bread of life. And when God feeds you with the bread of life, the next thing that illumination hits you. You know, they journeyed with him many days to Emmaus. And he was talking, they could not even recognize him until he broke bread. And their eyes were open and they recognized him. When you begin to eat the bread, you enter into illumination. That's when you see the menorah. The menorah is the seven government of heaven. The government of the Lord. The government of his wisdom. The government of his knowledge. The government of his might. The government of the fear of the Lord is the menorah. So suddenly you interact with different dimensions of the powers of the age to come. You can't be confused anymore. You can't be deceived. You can't be drawn away because you have a light that is not the sun. Those who are in the outer court, their illumination is the sun. Because the outer court has no covering. It is the sun. The problem with the sun is that the sun darkens. In Psalm 121 verse 6, he said, The sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. Why? Because you have entered the secret place. But if you are in the outer court, the sun will darken your heart. The sun is the wisdom of this world. And he said, the wisdom of this world is first of all sensual. That's why in Songs of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 6, he said, look not upon me because I am black. He said, the sun has looked upon me. There are many pastors that live by the philosophy of the internet. They want to teach, they go, goku scriptures on the internet. They are powered by the sun. That's why you will be shouting, fornication, hell. Yet the people will live in it because you don't come with light that proceeds from the government of heaven. You have no illumination. You will be darkened. They are talking flesh, yet everything emanating out of them is pride. They are darkened by the sun. Because when man fell, he lost the powers over the earth. And the prince of this world now rules the earth. 
is called the prince of the power of the air he can manipulate the constellations and he will darken the souls of men anything that brings illumination outside of the menorah is a sign that you are in the outer court what you need to do is to go deeper and the way deeper is the way of prayer so priesthood is the part the instrument of eternal preservation can you live above the sun why do you think most of us are afraid is the news we hear but if we heard the breaking news of heaven we will be like Mount Zion that cannot be moved I'm trying to you know this thing you have to <laughs> that is what we should teach so <laughs> I am an IT student. Don't mind me. This is IT. When the menorah illuminates a man, the only thing that comes out of him is worship. At this time, he has nothing he can pride himself in anymore. The prince of this world come to me and findeth nothing. At this point, the powers of my emotion have been loosened. The cord of my will have given way. The things they taught me when I was young, I have forgotten the philosophy of my ancestors. I have forgotten the philosophy of the world system. Before I came here, I used to think that the Igede man never gets married to the thief woman. But you see, I have forgotten that philosophy. My heart was darkened, but I am purged by the, the, the light and the government of the menorah. Before I came here, I thought ministry was money. I thought it was breakthrough, so I was zealous. But a point came when I checked my strength have been taken away. So I have become a puppet in the hand of God. I can't move until he moves me. At that time you have become worship. An instrument of worship. Worship is not a good song. Worship is the ability to yield to the dictates of the spirit of God. So he flows out of you effortlessly. It was a person that showed us spiritual paralysis. When God wants to function, he can't function because you, are, you have your strength. You are not an agent of worship. But when you are fed of the shoe bread and illuminated by the menorah, you can rise up to go to Egypt and he will say, Stay still in Gera. Stay still in Gera. So everything that comes out of you is an offspring of deity. Ministry becomes an offspring of deity. Many they produce things by their intercourse with the world they call it ministry they call it do you not know that most of the things we call ministry today is babel is men building a name for themselves and god will crush babel babel must go down anything that is not born of your intercourse with the holy ghost is not the offspring of god he cannot pass the test of time in first corinthians 4 verse 5 he said when the judge of all shall appear he will judge the intentions in the heart of men what motivates what powers what inspires what you build if you don't enter the inner court anything you build is a product of this age and it will burn by the fires that come from the eyes of god that's why he said having received a kingdom that cannot be moved let us receive grace to serve god acceptably there are many kinds of service that is not acceptable the only service acceptable is the service that is powered by grace daddy was sharing with us he said you can be worshiping on this altar but you are moving by your mind by your mind there is it doesn't resonate in zion because grace have no signature on it and anything not born of grace will be born by fire the fire will burn it and your life would have been a waste preparation is coming into intimacy your words your action are born by intercourse with divinity 
That's when God can vet your work and say, well done, thou faithful servant. Many came, said they casted out devils in his name. He said, go, I know you not. You are workers of iniquity. You didn't travel to a point where you will be illuminated. A man of God said, grace is the supernatural power to live above death and corruption. Your will can't stand it because your will is compromised already. Your soul traffics energy from this world. It receives vibrations from this world. The only way you can come to a point where you give expression to things born in the spirit is when by prayer you journey into the secret place and your life becomes worship. Your life. God has the right of way over you any day, any time. You have no possession. Even the money in your account, you become a trust fund. Yahweh can show up and say, sign out that money for that project. When you are young in these things, like some of us, you will cry. But every time you want to pray, you will hear, give it out. Because you can't go forward until that government breaks you. When everything about your life becomes worship, then you are promoted to the secret place where you only see by the Shekinah. You know, the, the Holy of Holies have no light. If you come by God, if you come by the incense, because after the altar of incense, which is worship, you come into the ambience of the Shekinah. The Shekinah is where the absolute government of God is. That is why priesthood legislation doesn't begin until you come to the holy of holies that's where the government the seat of government dwells many people stand up and say we do this we do nothing happens because we do this is in the flesh as simple as ministration healing the sick is sometimes we are doing things for flesh it doesn't work it doesn't work legislation litigation begins when the shekinah appears that's when the priest pours the blood upon the mercy seat. It's a dimension called before the foundation of the world. It's a place where no corruption can travel to. If we don't journey to that point, there's no hope. So as we evangelize the world, we must teach the world the, the way of prayer. We must teach the world how to travel until we come under the government of his presence because that's where man was created to rule from dominion is not outside of eden is within the ambience of eden you can't have dominion outside of eden everything outside of eden is the is the city of nod God does not have a hand in it. In obedience to God is the Holy Ghost Spirit of the living God is the Holy Ghost Scepter of the King of Kings is the Holy Ghost Spirit of the age to come is changing everything in obedience to God. If we ask ourselves what is eternal life, we will say eternal life is a life that doesn't fall sick. If we ask ourselves what is eternal life, we will shout that is immortality. But Jesus said, this is life eternal, that you may know him. Eternal life is the experience of God. An experience that brings you to the God class. So, a life of divine health is not eternal life. Divine health is an offspring of eternal life. Immortality is an offspring of eternal life. Eternal life is the life that makes a man comes to the class of God. And that is possible by experience because the word that you may know him is the word ginosko. Ginosko means the experience of God. 
you explore him in the secret place he re-engineers you he re-engineers you until your walls are seasoned with salt this is why jesus didn't say pray for the sick he said lay hands on the sick what what is happening what is flowing from you is the life of god you have become one through intercourse through intimacy this is life eternal legally the death of jesus and his acceptance procures it to your spirit but the experience make you become it paul said this is the mystery of godliness first timothy 3 16 he said that god became flesh he was justified in the spirit he was revealed to angels preached in the world accepted of gentiles and received unto glory is a circuit a circuit that brings god out of glory to carry a race back into glory that is eternal life the mingling of man with god until he is swallowed up by his dimensions if you become a god kind of man you don't fall sick so a sickless life is not eternal life a sickless life is an offspring of that intercourse immortality is an offspring of that intercourse but that kind of knowledge comes when you travel to the holy of holies so the first preparation is to deliver the world from the great falling away through massive evangelism the second preparation is the journey into intimacy so that you can withstand the great tribulation and the third, the third preparation is the preparation of bequeathing yourself with eternal reward the finished works of christ does not give you reward in eternity it is your works that gives you reward in eternity and the only work that appear in eternity is a work devoid of flesh it's a work that is powered by the holy ghost himself this is why when you come to intimacy god kills the flesh there is no technology of killing the flesh the only technology of killing the flesh is the presence of god he said in first samuel 15 33 and samuel healed hagar to pieces before the lord it is before the lord that flesh is swallowed up so if you don't come there you cannot exchange flesh for divinity and if flesh still rule you you have no reward in eternity so the final preparation is the preparation for the judgment seat where men are given their rewards many will sit on thrones but others might remain in outer darkness who are they that shall be in the new jerusalem they that have been purified their garments have been purified in the blood of the son this is why at the end it becomes a reality of intimacy he said the spirit and the bride say come you come to a point where you tame flesh you tame it he said god opened the windows of heaven and he opened the fountains of the deep and all flesh was drowned when that time that envelope that intensity of the presence comes it begins to mortify the flesh the flesh is killed by the presence of god that's the preparation for the judgment seat the preparation for the judgment seat is the preparation of eternal reward and it is a place prayer carries you to your prayer must bring you isaiah was a prophet he became a national prophet until the king that supplied and powered his loss died and he said in the year that king Uzziah died i saw the lord and the moment he saw the lord something happened isaiah realized that he saw he was a man of unclean lips that is a national prophet how did he now saw that is he now you are realizing yes because now you can see yourself from the sea of glass you can see yourself before the the mirror of liberty so you were a smart prophet on earth but before the sea of glass you are a man of unclean lips and he say woe unto me that's a national prophet he had never traveled to the presence he came for the first time and they began to judge his flesh and this the seraphim touched his tongue with a coal of fire that was when he began to prophesy about the messiah because the cardinal responsibility of his prophetic ministry was to bring the message of the messiah but a man of unclean lips could not preach it you can call names and phone number but you may never preach the message of your ordination until flesh dies until flesh dies this is how men will journey past the tribulation when the plagues began 
after the third plague was released in Revelation 6 verse 6 he said touch not the oil and the wine the oil and the wine are the men that have exchanged flesh for the life of God you can't touch them Proverbs 23 verse 29 who is it that redness of eyes belong to they that carry long in the wine you carry there until God fills your vessel everything that is flesh is lost you can journey into the throne room that's why apostle was reading a while ago from acts of the apostles they troubled them they put fear these guys they they think the devil attacked was their boldness and they became feeble but when they prayed when they prayed he said they were baptized again another layer came upon them and suddenly boldness was swallowed up a dimension in the spirit called sophronismus was activated Ephesians 2 7 he has not given us the spirit of fear but of boldness of love and of a sound mind they began to tap into the frequency of God it's called sophronismus living above the mundanity of flesh because you have crossed the veil of the divide you have passed from death to life you have been soaked in the waters of the spirit your life is an expression of God there is no flesh anymore everything that comes out of you is a mirror that reflects God he said we all with unveiled faces beholding us in a glass the image of the Lord we are changed it's a re-engineering flesh is taken away and God is revealed through a man so when you see that man you are interacting with the dimension of God a man can show up and it becomes a reflection of grace a man can show up he becomes the reflection of the anointing a man can show up he becomes the reflection of help you will think he's foolish if he doesn't help he can't rest he is lost that thing in him that thinks of self has been taken away so he sees himself in others and until he helps others he can't have peace flesh is gone flesh is gone this is what the men of old pursued after they pursued they pursued after it Abraham the Bible said he was the man of the altars everywhere he came he latched there until flesh is taken Lord didn't know he showed up their herdsmen are battling Abraham said pick anywhere you want I'm not moved by anything time and space has to offer I have seen him that is invincible and the guy saw the plains of Sodom full of green grass and vegetation and he went to Sodom and Abraham went back to where he lives from and God said lift up your eyes lift up your eyes we don't see the plains of the earth we see the plains of Zion lift up your eyes lift up your eyes and the earth was given to him as a possession Daniel was in Babylon you will think the greatest honors of Babylon is to become a prince. Many fight in church for position. They have not seen him that is invincible. The king said, we make you the president among the princes. Daniel said, make Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego princes. I will sit at the gate. There is something I want to behold every day. It is Jerusalem. Jerusalem. And he said, three times in a day, as his custom was, he lifted up his eyes and he prayed facing Jerusalem that was superior to Daniel for Daniel it was more important than the title and the honors of a prince beholding Jerusalem where he can see the beauty of Israel three times in a day the Holy Ghost began to teach me God told me there are functionaries that have been released into this earth to teach men God anybody that prays now we know God there is an energy level that has been released upon the earth on account of intercession so that men can latch on to God. These were dimensions the patriarchs walked in. Lift up your eyes. He said, as at other time. And God began to teach me. He said, three times in a day. Daniel prayed around 9 a.m. in the morning. That was when Jesus was crucified. So flesh is dealt with in the morning prayer. Daniel prayed by 12. That is the ninth hour where salvation is granted because he saw the woman of Samaritan 
at the ninth hour and he gave her salvation that's when daniel interceded for babylon because salvation is at that hour he had entered into an educational system that was not written even in the books of the prophets he knows when the message of salvation comes and daniel prayed by 3 p.m in the evening it is the time of the evening sacrifice where oblations are lifted to god the god that kills your flesh and empowers you to bring others to salvation you worship him and three o'clock is the moment of encounter that's why daniel grew so much in the prophetic once upon a time he needed to go and consult god but the day came that daniel doesn't consult god anymore he has lived there to a point where he can come out with it and the, the prince the king called him he said god gave your father a throne and a kingdom that spread all around the world but you decided to worship the god of iron and of stone he said therefore is this hand come they could not even read the writing how did you know you were not there when the hand came how did you know it was a hand because when that verdict was passed he was there in that court session it's not news to him he came from where the hand came from and he said many men take care of us today your kingdom have been weighed in the back you have been weighed in the balances and your kingdom has been divided among the medics and the patients and that night the king lost his kingdom a man that knows how to dwell in the presence how was moses able to run from egypt they say he saw him that was invincible how was abraham able to give isaac he mounted el shaddai what is el shaddai upon the mountain the lord shall be seen El Shaddai is the mountain one. When he entered there, Abraham saw beyond Isaac. He saw Jesus. He saw him. And Jesus said, Abraham, your father saw my day. And he rejoiced in it. Abraham knew the seed was not Isaac. This Isaac, God can raise him back in a figure. I have seen something that is eternal. Because he mounted El Shaddai. This man traveled in God until they entered into dimensions and possibilities. I read about Moses, I almost cried. Moses, at the age of over 80, every day he climbed Sinai. Mount Sinai is 7,490 feet tall. How can an 80 year old man climb such a height? It was hunger for the presence. He knows that's where flesh is exchanged. He mounted stones, he fell off, he climbed again. And sometimes after climbing Sinai, for six days, God will not show up. He will be waiting. And one day he came down. The Bible said he wished not that his face shone like the sun. The man had become a God. God told him, I will make you a God unto Pharaoh. But that manifestation came after he began the business of Sinai. That was why Moses knew God so much. That he was the one that brought the revelation of Jehovah Zaphaniah. The word Jehovah Zaphaniah is the God that hides himself. The God that dwells in the dark. There was a man that knew God so much that even when God hides himself, he can find him. When God descends in a dark cloud, Moses knows he can find him. Whereas Aaron need to prepare for eight months to go before the mercy seat, Moses goes there without the blood. He had become the law. When you look upon him, he's a dimension of God. The question tonight is how prepared are you? How many souls can you bring into this kingdom? When your voice is heard, what is the echo in the hearts of men? Do you have the power to bring the convicting presence? Because the spirit of God came to convict the world. But that conviction comes when God thunders through the voices of men. What is the vibration that comes from your voice? Do men hear your message and increase knowledge? Or they hear your message and they are quickened? It's where you speak from. Yeah, na, 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 na. Yeah, 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 yeah. Farana Savaya, Ceseliba Bahas, Venecaya Sevela Manaria Sivas, Ese Sevias, Marano Sevas, Akaya Somaya, Ese Variana Suba. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
Witnesses, the word witness is the word matos, maturayo is a martyr. A martyr is not just a man that is beheaded, a martyr is a man that dies daily because he lives to please the interest of his king. You cannot witness to a dying world if you are part of them. The first thing that qualifies us. The preparation that qualifies us is to journey through in through priesthood into the secret place until our dimensions begin to appear. When I listened to our father, I pursued the spirit because I was caught up. I didn't intend to follow. I was a proud young man when I where I came from. I had potentials. I would have been sent out of this nation long before now, but I heard a voice. It shattered my, my lust. He killed it. I, I came here. I said, what is this? But I couldn't go back. The reason we can keep people in the kingdom is because there is an anakazo dimension from our voice. It is the compelling force. When we speak, it is the thunder and the thunderings of the voice of God. It divided the flames of fire. It divides it. We are witnesses. How much debt can you take? How much? How much debt have you experienced? John was a preacher for many years, but in his dying age, he was cast to the Isle of Patmos. The Isle of Patmos, the word Patmos means the mountain of my dying. The place of my dying. And in Patmos, he said, I was in the spirit on the last day. The guy has died to everything. Like Paul, he counts everything as dung. I was in Patmos in the day of the Lord. And I heard a voice. The moment he began to write that letter, is anybody that reads this is blessed? What do you think the fathers pursued? They pursued intimacy because the patriarch himself, that was what he pursued. He said in Isaiah 51, he said, Hacking unto to him, all ye that loveth after righteousness, look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah that body. I called him alone and blessed him. What was the path that the patriarch pioneered? Walk before me and be thou perfect. So God was their ultimate demand. God was their ultimate possession. Moses had seen all the powers. And God said, I will send my angel and say, No, if you don't go, we will not depart from here. So power was not his obsession. God was his obsession. The reason we are weak is because we have not seen him. He said because Moses saw him that was invincible, he endured. There is an energy to stay and to bet that which is in the heart of the Father. Our garments must be dipped in the blood. We must come back under the government of his presence. Because it is not just about being raptured. There is a word after. There is a word hereafter. And that is a word for champions. They that overcome. They that overcome. They that overcome. Tonight, we will pray for God to grant us grace to prepare. One of the major things priesthood does is that it prepares us for the days to come. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are the white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood? In the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Your greatest asset is a purified soul. 
is the soul that can stand before the judgment seat of God. 